All right, hello everyone. This is Tips and Tricks in Halo Wars for the mission Scarab. This is one of the more frustrating missions in the Halo Wars 1 campaign. This is, uh, I think, mission 6 or mission 7. The Really, the instructions for this mission, like some of the other missions in, in Halo Wars, are not very clear. You just need to destroy this super Scarab that's under construction. It can't move, but this beam is always kind of doing a patrol around the map and it doesn't matter where it detects your units it will fire um, and destroy your units automatically now you do have some protection right here for your base and honestly i couldn't tell you if there's any pattern or if there's a timing thing the scarab will start destroying these pillars and eventually destroy your base and once your base is destroyed that's kind of gg easy if you will. Now, there are these nodes kind of scattered around, and it's a little difficult to see within the fog of war, but kind of where these lines end, there's these power lines on the ground, and when they end, that is where some of these nodes are located. Well, I should say where all the nodes are located. And it is uh, optional for you to get these. However, I would kind of really consider these a requirement to get just because they slow down the movement of the Scarab so much and it's so helpful that I really recommend that you get it. In terms of what you want to build here at your base, I really like having vehicles here, particularly Scorpions and Wolverines. Those will come in very handy. There are Covenant units scattered around the map. Did it destroy that Warhog? No, it didn't. You could hear it firing there. Um... And there are some phantoms that deploy as well. The game, for whatever reason, also gives you some plasma rhinos. I think these things are completely useless in this. If anything, I would just lock them down close to your base so they can kind of protect any sort of raiding that's going to occur. The bulk, I think, of your army composition is going to be within your scorpions and wolverines. We actually have quite a lot of resources, so I will build a extra vehicle depot. And once... You know, I would say just be mindful of your units. This is a more micro-intensive mission. Um, once the Scarab destroys Forge, he will be out of the Forge Hog. And as I stated in my Arcadia City video, uh, he is pretty useless outside of the Forge Hog itself. So do whatever you can to kind of keep him in there. And you can kind of see how quickly the Scarab bar kind of sways. You want to make sure that you're staying behind cover as much as you can. And each one you destroy, it will start moving slower and slower. So if it takes you a little bit longer to, you know, build up your units just to make sure that you're protected, by all means do that. Just be mindful that destroying, when the Scarab destroys more of these pillars, it's going to make it more difficult for yourself. So you can almost kind of snowball in a direction you don't want it to go, where you don't have a whole lot of cover remaining. You do have a Mac Blast. I like saving it because it's expensive. You only get one shot, I believe, unless you upgrade it. Yeah, that's correct. Is for like a big group of units, you know, this might work. I'm probably going to lose the tank here. There's also natural barriers here, like this rock. You know, the Scarab can't destroy that rock. And it's okay if you lose some of your units... Um, just so long as it's like, you know, these Marines are probably just dead. So just be mindful of where your units are. It's okay to lose some units. What's more important is the micro. You can see, even just destroying one of these things, how much slower the Scarab is turning. I am playing on regular here, normal difficulty. Um, I normally play on a higher level difficulty, so I'm not sure if the Scarab you know, pivots faster on those difficulties or if destroying these pylons don't affect the speed as much. I'm, I'm really not sure, or maybe I'm just making all of it up. Now, let's say here, I'll, I'll go ahead and get some units and show you here just for, well, I don't want to do that just yet. You can, oh, the Pelican's not here. I was going to say maybe you could try to Pelican, but it's not here. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Now, you can actually get to a point where you can get quite effective. Let's say you're in a position kind of where I am, and there's no cover, and the beam is approaching you. Well, you just move the opposite direction. 
I'm gonna walk into it. So what'll happen is the beam will fire. And as long as you keep moving your units, you should be fine. And there's like three or four of them just on this side. And you're probably in a pretty good spot to do some damage here. Meanwhile, of course, you can continue to be making units. The reason why I like having Wolverines in this situation is they, their volleyability is quite good in this kind of scenario. Here's a raid happening right here, and that's kind of where the plasma rhinos kind of come into play. Now, let's say you want to start attacking the Scarab. This takes forever. You want to make sure that you're keeping a track on your units because you'll eventually run out of room. As long as you tell your units to move, it doesn't really matter. I think I've only destroyed like two or three pylons. You know, you can see how slow it goes. So it, it kind of gives you an opportunity here to babysit your units. And you can continue attacking the Scarab. And that's kind of really all you need to be concerned about. You know, if you're finding this difficult and you're still losing your units to the Scarab Beam, then by all means, be sure to go and destroy a few more of the pylons. I think this one over here is the most difficult to get to because it's kind of on a, you know, its own little island, if you will. Oh, made it. <laughs> and then you can drop, of course, a heal and repair on your units so I have enough units here. Let's, uh, so there it goes. It's going to start destroying this. Again, I could not tell you what the pattern is here on why it does that. Sometimes I think you can put your units too close to the wall here. And sometimes I feel like it glitches out and it'll just destroy for no reason whatsoever. No matter what the pattern is, your primary focus really should be right here. Because there's nothing you can do about this, whether you have units sitting there or not. I mean, there's nothing you can do. Oh, there's there's one right there. Let's destroy that. And so now you can tell all of your tanks to do that, and then I'll mac it. You can also get to a point where you can have almost too many units here. He really is letting those barriers have it, huh? And unfortunately, I, again, I can't really tell you what the solution is here. I mean, I don't have any units close to this wall. It kind of seems like it's stuck here. Attacking my wall over and over and over again. Luckily, I am doing quite a bit of damage. Looks like he's going to destroy my base. I don't know. I would save your healing repairs for that moment. I am. It's going to be kind of close. So you just destroyed one of my tanks there. You know, and I don't know if this is a definitive edition bug or not. Here, okay, so here we go. We want to kind of get ready. Well, so we just triggered the beam. I'm only going to send two tanks across because not all of my tanks could make it. And it's going to start kind of moving again to this side. So I'll take the next batch of tanks, send it across. That pauses the beam. Allows my tanks, again, to kind of group up. That's kind of all you need to need to do for this. Uh-oh. There we go. And my base is going to survive. And I think it's, again, you'd want to just keep the rhinos at home because they got to lock down and all this stuff. It just doesn't really make any sense to me to bring them towards the scare because if the beam's arriving, then you have to, you know, pack them up and move them in time. I, I just think they're better suited for you. And I think they're designed that way to be more of a defensive unit here with your turrets. Well, there you go. I only destroyed, I don't know, three or four pylons and was still able to kind of micro around. So practice a little bit and you should be in a good spot to take out the scarab. If you want to see my strategies for Arcadia City, I'll leave a link to that down in the description. And if this is your first time here at Team Respawn, we love Halo Wars, so be sure to check out other Halo Wars content. That's going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching, everybody.
and I'll see you, James.